Lakeith Stanfield makes a good point about uh, what do you call it? Black media entertainment channels and shit. This is a beef that I didn't see occurring, but this. Um, so Lakeith Smith, famously from Get Out, has been has had a bit of a fraught relationship with black media or black hip hop media websites. I remember him going on breakfast chat on a breakfast uh, club and having a bit of a clash with um, Charlemagne because I think he did a little freestyle and Charlemagne basically said it was shit. And they had a really frosty um, interaction there. But in 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 general, when he goes on these um, black radio stations, he seems he seems to have his back up, or seems to have a chip on his shoulder. He seems maybe because he knows they're going to get into some foolishness, and it doesn't seem like he really enjoys interviews anyway. For the most part, if you've seen his other interviews, he's usually fucking around, playing a character, you know, just you know, just being his eccentric self. Um, so it's no surprise that he'd make this point. But I think <clears throat> the point he's making, regardless of how what you think of him as a person, is legitimate and has some kind of credence. So especially when you think about people like Wendy Williams. I've never really been the biggest fan of gossip-based black entertainment websites anyway. I think, for me in general, I think there was an issue in the beginning of black entertainment where it felt as if the mainstream media wasn't giving some of our favorite artists the credit or the coverage that they deserved. So in an, in an effort to kind of fill that gap, some of the more entrepreneurial people in the black media space decided to copy some of the um some of the most some of the lowest common denominator websites or media sites out there and try and make their version of it mostly the gossip ones and um they thought that was the best way to kind of gain traction and it probably was right i think those gossip channels or the gossip platforms as de as deplorable as they may be the message they send out and what kind of actions they kind of um indirectly reinforce they have done a good thing in terms of being able to be a platform to showcase some of the more lesser known entities in, you know, in the black media scape. For instance, like I don't think uh, Love and Hip Hop would be as big or as maybe well regarded as it is now if it wasn't as covered, you know, as extensively as it has done, as it has been on the Shade Room and Bossip and those kind of places. It's allowed a person that was on Love and Hip Hop to basically be on the same platform as, like, you know, your Jay-Z and shit, even though they're not even the same stratosphere, but those platforms allow them to occupy the same sort of space. But obviously, those platforms are primarily driven by gossip. That's what, it's, that's what basically drives interaction, right? Someone getting into a fight, um, slanging match on the comments, um, you know, indirects through tweets and whatever, and captions and all that stuff, like um, compromising images. Those are the things that really gain traction and really gain and really kind of pique the interest of some of the readers on these websites. And I think without them realizing, they, sub they kind of subconsciously reinforce um, negative stereotypes or they sometimes encourage weird behavior because people are trying to act out so that some even subconsciously even if they're not aware of it they're trying to act out so they can get on those pages and there's nothing worse or nothing there's a no bigger example of that than when wendy williams right she's essentially i think in my opinion one of the most deplorable characters in the black media space right she spends she has a, a TV show where she essentially sits down and talks about everyone else's business, sometimes very disparagingly. Stuff that she said about Meghan Markle and all that stuff is really, really disgusting. Um, she obviously did that thing with Method Man and his wife when she was going through battling that cancer issue that was really deplorable. Um, she's just been a really scummy person. If you're aware of who she is prior to the radio days when she used to present with Charlemagne, you'd know that she was a very um, confrontational and nasty, catty person. But somehow, I'm not sure what happened, maybe it's the power of Hollywood, she's somehow been able to reinvent herself as some kind of you know a mer fairy godmother of celebrity gossip and news and people are now actively going to her to kind of tell their side of the story which i've never really agreed with either because she's not somebody that you can ever trust she'd be somebody that could easily throw you under the bus and reveal secrets about you that you would never you would never have kind of assumed would happen and just a very scummy person kind of the kind of the, the bottom you know the dregs of it and if you look at some of the guests on her show you can see that some of the top tier artists that we kind of all respect would never set foot on her stage or on her couch in it because you know they don't want to be associated with it whatsoever and i think other stations too hot 97 have been guilty of it you know they sometimes exploited the inner conflicts within some of their own presenters for views online which has been disgusting the breakfast club of course early charlemagne was very much so in that lane of making sure he said the most crazy and divisive thing in order to kind of um, elicit a reaction. And now he's kind of, you know, co-opted his whole mental health, um, you know, black love, black men don't cheat persona. But, you know, we all know where he's come from. So we know these platforms are, you know, by and large, for the most part, very much so it reinforced negative stereotypes also not a really good platform for artists or entertainers or public figures to go and really talk about their work. It's usually mostly talking about drama. And, you know, it's no slight on them. Everyone's got their thing to do. But if you say it out loud and you call it out, 
trying to now defend yourself and make it seem as if what that person's saying is irrelevant doesn't make any sense either. But let's read what um, Lakeith's statement said. So Lakeith, um, uh, sorry, Lakeith Stanfield made an Instagram post detailing his basically dissatisfaction with these platforms. And he said the following, um, it's a fact, this is captioned, right? It's a fact that a lot of these platforms, the Shade Room, Lipstick Alley, Breakfast Club, World Star, and many others um, uh, are usually or tend to be feeding grounds for negative reinforcement towards black nonconformists. They bolster faux vanity, hold a white supremacist scope over black men and women, often highlighting negative attributes and downplaying mind expanding one, which is very true, right? It's like, you know, you don't, how many times have you watched the Breakfast Club interview, scroll down to the comments and see people say, oh, wow, this is a really good interview for once, right? And why do people say that? Because for the most part, most interviews have to do with, you know, who someone's fucking, who they're not with together anymore, the money they lost, drugs, some pregnancy thing. It's always kind of messy stuff, always kind of really personal stuff, not a lot of stuff to do with the albums. Sometimes, the only time you see a really kind of considered interviews where they actually go in depth and kind of try and understand the, the you know, the frame of mind that personality they're making that particular track is when they're interviewing OGs, right? That's when a lot of respect is kind of due on there. Um, an example would be um, the interview Hot 97 had with Kano, one of the most disrespectful interviews you've seen in a long time, right? Ebro is very well known for always kind of letting the artist know, the guest know that he didn't listen to the album. Um, and it was kind of just, you know, no one in that room did any research on who Kano was, any kind of idea of what his influence is or what his standing is in the, you know, in, in the UK music scene, which would have taken just a couple of Googles. It's not anything, you know, you don't have to watch tons of documentaries or dig into forums. A couple of Google searches, you understand what Kano's place is in the whole um, um, UK music scene is. But instead, they kind of, you know, reduced it to the common denominator, started making some cheesy, corny English, London, UK slang jokes and all that malarkey. And eventually, it just turned it just devoid of any kind of relevance. The interview was a bit uh, banal and a little bit empty. So it's you wouldn't be remiss if you're okay to say that, you know, I'm not going to appear on these things again if they're not going to research me or have any kind of knowledge of what I'm doing. So again, pointing out isn't a big deal. But of course, you know, Charlemagne the God decided to kind of jump on Breakfast Club and argue his point and basically say that Lakeith Stansfield is essentially, what is he doing? He essentially shucks and jives for the white man, but then he's quick to kind of point out the errors of his own black community, which is kind of crazy, to be honest. I think he made a good point. I don't see anything wrong with it. Um, again, I think maybe Charlemagne's reaction to Le Le uh, Lakeith Stansfield's quirkiness and his kind of quirky traits and how he conducts himself in interviews and kind of shock and awe of it is again an indication as to why Lakeith Stansfield is making a good good point. But I think in general now these sites make themselves they make too much money spreading American negative stereotypes to stop it. But I also think it's an opportunity for somebody out there to provide a platform that actually you know when um so you know when dj booth first started and it was like everyone was like hyped about it because there were actually writers on dj booth who sounded like they were fans of music and they listened to albums and they gave really good considered feedback and they were interviewing artists with a lot of love and appreciation remember that thing that was a big deal why because for the most part most of the websites are just like you know empty vessels of fucking bullshit like empty you know what i mean like like genius for instance right no real substance behind everything they write and just you know throw away articles that you know no one will give a shit about after you've read them for a couple of minutes but i wish we had more platforms like early dj booth maybe on social media that were able to kind of expand more on people's business acumen talk about talk about tyler the creator's investments and his store and his new collection ask him about the inspiration about his new shoes talk about rocky and what he's done sonically and how he thinks has influenced a new generation like actually talk about the craft of what these people are doing the impact they have on culture and not talk about the messy person stuff. because what i realize especially the older you get everyone's got their issues everyone's got their problems everyone's going through shit so to kind of waste your time sitting there talking to an artist who's one of the only like there's not a lot of people who are able to kind of um traverse that long and windy road to success right you're what you're kind of you know, within the, the, the point decimal percent of people who are successful. To waste your time sitting there um, trying to understand why their baby mother's freaking out online instead of talking about their creative work is a waste of time because you can get that story for somebody else. We've all got friends in our circle that are going through crazy relationship stuff. Why not spend your time, you know, advising your friends who are close to you, who have you have some kind of insight on, or maybe just don't care about, or maybe just do what normal people should be doing and mind your own business. 
use the time when you've got an artist in front of you to talk about their art, talk about what went into it, because those are more interesting. Maybe talk about some issues that are going on in the world and get a perspective about things. That's of more interest as opposed to sitting down there and talking again. And it just, it's an, even the Joe Biden podcast, for instance, when they talk about relationship stuff, I skip super fast. Like, uh, women, men and women stuff, it's just boring. Like, who cares? We all go through that stuff. We're going through it personally ourselves. Let's talk about it again and again. It's just so nauseating. It's why people probably are tuning out or back chat and all that sort of stuff. Um, it's just you know the same old fucking topics you know or would you date somebody that's shorter do girls need to have money it's just like fucking hell who cares about this shit let's talk about the art let's talk about culture let's actually try and move things forward and <clears throat> which is probably why people like Kanye like to sit down with people like Zane Lowe because you know you're going to get even though that whole interview was a bit softball the whole interview for the most part the majority interview concerned his investments his ideas around design his perspective on music and just generally him talking about his artistry. That was what, he, there were times where he was defending himself about this, you know, his stances and things, but that was the majority of the interviews that Zane Lowe does are, consi- are concentrated about the music. The artist must appreciate. I'm sure people in the industry appreciate it too because, you know, their clients are able to go into an interview and not be made to sweat, you know, under their collar because the interviewer is asking them about some person they fucked back in the day. It doesn't make any sense. So for Charlamagne to sit there and defend those actions obviously proves that, you know, you know someone's coming at your basically livelihood because you know without the gossip without all that innuendo what does he really have no actually you know what that's the that's the shame that's the kind of disappointing thing about someone like charlemagne or these kind of websites when they want to they can actually provide really wholesome content um didn't thingy majiggy didn't um what's his name look at the example that charlemagne had with the gucci man interview apart from the last 10 50 minutes of gucci man goes you know off the rails and start attacking angela yee that whole interview was really good right gucci man opened up he spoke about him, his influence on the culture he spoke about him, like his rehabilitation, you know, his his perspective on life now, how he he's he's um, actually towards music. We've got a little deal about Gucci Mane saying that you know he would ru- he would much rather his favorite artist make loads of music. That's his perspective. He likes to drop as much stuff as he can because you know his fans are going to appreciate it. And if other people don't appreciate it, not his fans. It doesn't really matter. Like really cool information that we got from him, all because Charlamagne decided to have some research um, and really got involved so that he can do that interview. But he decides to do the other interview about you know sucking farts out of people's butts and. You know, I'm um, asking um, <clears throat> who's the guy asking that actor that's on the Godfather of Harlem why his eye is droopy. Like, who does that? Like, who asks those kind of interviews? This this kind of questions somebody. Well, why would you would you ask your your friend just in in the middle of a party? Like, I don't know what's wrong with your eye or what happened to your lip or you know or whatever. Like, it's just really strange and really kind of again lacking any kind of um, I don't know just politeness and stuff it just doesn't make any sense and then you complain when those same artists decide you know what I'm going to go for a softball interview somewhere else I don't blame them or just don't talk at all just put your artwork out there so again an odd beef <clears throat> one you wouldn't thought would happen but makes sense you know the beef's been rumbling for a while since that freestyle but again I'm with Lakeith Smith on this um, the, 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 the more I'm sorry Lakeith Stanfield the more light we kind of uh, shine on this hopefully we have a reaction and some kid out there decides to make a platform where it's all about the art it's all about the artistry it's all about the person what they're making and it's less about all this like dumb dumb random shit that we don't need to know about but yeah maybe that's just me who knows